Hi everyone, this is week 33 of the 52 week project and as you can see on screen here I shot this uh, image of my watercolor paints um, under the wrong white balance setting uh, it's, and I think I was under a tungsten light to, uh, to begin with and it just really made it just super super yellow so first thing we're going to do is open it up in camera raw and uh, it's going to be another focus stacking, but I only focused on a smaller portion. Uh, there it is. There's my screen. Um, I see. That's my taskbar. Uh, I, fo I focused on a smaller area, so we're still going to have some blur in here, but uh, the depth of field was so tiny that uh, I didn't have much of a choice um, as but to uh, stack it. As you can see, look at this tiny little sliver that's in focus here and then the rest just is out of focus. So, select all and got to fix this color temperature and since we have a lot of yellow here, um, our color temperature opposite of the yellow here is the blue. So, let's move our temperature to around 2500 or so and as you can see it pretty much turns white like it should be um, you could also use an eyedropper tool let's just set this back to what it was default this is what we came in as uh, you can also use the eyedropper tool the white balance tool and just click on something that should be white which right there, look at that, it did drop this right to 2500 so, you know that's an easier way, or you could just do it by eye however you feel um, comfortable and could just be a matter of speed, you know uh, or, you know, it could be a matter of taste uh, next thing I want to do is uh, increase the exposure on this because it was a little underexposed, so I'm going to go about a whole stop, and I really should do a couple of tests on my camera and, and do it to uh, <clears throat> see what, what I like as an exposure. You know, because you look at the back of that LCD screen, and it, it's not always the same as it is when you bring it into, you know, a calibrated um, monitor. Um, so sometimes it's difficult when you're outputting to the to the web everybody's monitors see different and then you have color calibrated uh, browsers and if you know they're not reading you know you're looking at it in an uncalibrated browser it's just a, a big headache and the picture never comes out the way you look you know the way you see it and you want people to see it so I guess that's another reason why printed works are so much better than you know this uh, digital media that we have so I don't remember who said it, but um, uh, the quote kind of went like, uh, you know, an image isn't finished until it's been printed. You know, I, I kind of believe that. It's... All right, I'm babbling enough here, so let's keep on going. Uh, I'm going to increase my whites here, make them a little bit cleaner and brighter. Uh, I'm going to go way up, actually. You know, it's colorful. It's a lot of colors in the image, so I feel it should be a bright image. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, just gonna hit synchronize all just in case. Don't really need to, but it's good practice. You know, just get yourself into a routine. And I'm just gonna hit done because we want to once again open these objects up in in uh, Photoshop. In, as a stack, so we could have them in layers here, and I think it's in in Lightroom open. It says open layers in in Photoshop as a stack. I could be wrong, but I think that's that's what it is. Maybe that's where I'm getting it from, um, or maybe it's from Photoshop. It says open layers into a stack. I don't know. I'm babbling again, but uh, these images are open pretty quickly, even though they are raw images. Which is another n nice reason to shoot in RAW, as uh, you saw before with the color balance was way off. Um, 
it's very very simple to fix uh, okay I'm gonna shift click on this bottom layer here to select all the layers and just like last video I'll go into auto align layers and click OK oh that was fast um, go back again into edit and hit auto blend layers and make sure stack image is selected and hit OK now uh, if you watched last video I actually cropped first uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference you do it afterwards uh, you could do it before uh, I just realized that I hadn't done it so we'll do it next and we may be here a little while and it only takes maybe 15 seconds uh, on my computer but it might take longer on on other computers depending upon you know uh, uh, what you what processing power you have in your computer and how much RAM you have and how much uh, RAM you have dedicated to Photoshop okay there we go and I'm going to crop now I'm go to the crop tool and I'm just gonna pull it in a little bit and pull this corner in a little bit as well and it looks like I've got it all in the last video I had a little problem with the crop there and didn't crop it enough um, all right, hit enter and there we go hit V to get rid of that crop border and I'm going to turn into a smart object again and yeah, that's my shortcut there I use uh, control comma is my shortcut for it but uh, you can always set that up if you'd like if you use smart objects as often as I do um, or you can just go to the little flyout menu and hit convert to smart object okay as you can see like I said before we have a very narrow area of focus here oh, but I kinda like the blurred effect because it's just really the colors that uh, kind of drew my eye into this so um, I wanted your focus to be here on this the green one because um, it's, it's used I just got back into watercolor painting you know I had the paintings out I said oh that'd be kind of cool to shoot so that's what I did I'm babbling again sorry okay let's uh, let's punch these colors up a little bit and there's my infamous taskbar again and I'm going to put a little vibrance uh, adjustment layer here. Uh, I think saturation would just be too too strong on it. Uh, so that's why I'm going to use the vibrance. Um, I'll bring this up pretty high. And it doesn't look like it did too much. The saturation. Ah, uh, there. Saturation looks good. Let's see how that looks. And all right. Well, the vibrance is isn't really affecting the green much, but it is the other colors. that there. Now, let me see the difference. I'll turn this off and I'll show you. Let's see the, uh, the hue saturation. If I just increase the saturation of this, let's see, look at that. Yeah, it just turned the green radioactive, like, and it, not even by much. I mean, I'm only a 22, plus 22 there, and you got this weird looking stuff going on there. I don't know what that's all about. Like, that's funky. So that's why I opted to use the vibrance instead. I think it punched the colors up a bit more and it uh let me just turn the opacity down a little bit here. Let's 
so it's not too strong. Now let's add a little curves adjustment layer so we can have a little contrast in here. And where are my curves? There we go. down pretty low with that. I want a lot of black in there. Get nice texture looking coming in there and then bring up make my S curve. And like I said, I kinda want this image to be brighter because you know it's colorful. It's happy colors. Looks pretty good right there. Um, it's not not such a, a a steep curve on the high end there, but this, this is pretty bright over here. I don't want to go too bright with that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's go to full screen here. Hit F a couple times on the keyboard and. Let me zoom in a little bit, fill up the screen, and there you have it. I will see you all next week. Bye.